guys, here is Madame OK and today I want to invite you uh, on another creative adventure. This time we will be working on uh, a watercolor painting representing the trees. And to help us with this um, assignment we will use masking tape. So we want to have trees created by using masking tape, imagine you or not. So this will be, um, we want to vary those trees. We don't want to have them to be of the same size in terms of the thickness of the trunk. So that will be one trunk. Notice this one is a little bit, a little bit, uh, let's see, medium size. So I want to make this one here a little bit thicker. So I apply one layer of masking tape and next to it actually overlapping another piece so this chunk of the tree that crosses the boundaries the top and the lower boundary here or which we can say the tree is cropped here um, will be thicker than the tree that goes into the back now i want to put another tree trunk uh, let's see coming here so that will be of the same width in terms of the trunk as this tree here but hmm, I need also the skinnier one. So to have a skinnier tree, I certainly have to cut my masking tape into the width that I want to have. Oh, that doesn't go so easy. Look at this, we can get different mask, uh, masking tape with different width, or simply we have to suffer by cutting it here. The way we want to get our trunks. So this trunk will be certainly narrower and we'll place it in the back. You see, so here I have to just make sure that I pick up this piece from the back tier it and then I will use another one coming here. So you see, oh la la, I have those trunks here. The only one thing which I don't like about this trunk is that on the bottom part, this is quite not, not um, thick enough. So that should be okay. And then I will present another trunk a little bit on this side here. So you see, I have quite a bit of trunks here. Maybe another one still will come on the side. Let's see where should it come. Maybe one trunk will, hmm, should I use it? Or maybe I will simply tear it. It's too much, too much work otherwise, okay? So another one will come, not here, not here, not here, maybe, let's see, maybe I want to have another one coming here, like this, oh la la, that would be good, good. From now on, I have to decide where will be my line that will represent um, the sky and the line that will represent the ground. So I can use markers or you can use pencil, it doesn't matter really. Um, like you see for me since my trunk, the highest place trunk is over there, so that will be my line. Doesn't need to be even, notice it doesn't need to be even at all, right? I make this nice wavy line, I like it like this. And then I can think about my trees, how do I want to have them now, right? Do I want to have them in the in, um, let's see, there where we have a grass, in, well, of course, the forest, should it be a snowy landscape that, it, of course, everything will look differently, but I think I want to have colors. So, the sky. Let us start with the sky. This is the easiest way because we know that the sky, our sky will be blue. So, the blue color that I want to use here will be um, my cool blue, this one. It's called Taylo, Taylo blue, and I make sure that it's quite uh, lots of lots of pigment that means I apply quite a thick layer well as as I can say with watercolors thick layer that means little of water lots of paint you see and I'm following the line I can even go on top of the masking tape since I know that nothing bad will happen since I covered the piece of um, of paper that I will later on um, use for my trunks with masking tape so this part is covered already. We have to still follow the other ones and make sure again that the sky will be nicely thickly covered, not thickly, well, quite very intense amount of pigment in the watercolors. So certainly you can see it how nicely um, already the sky looks like. And it does, notice I'm not using water. I had the first layer of water on my brush 
and you see this we can still hear how this looks like we have this uneven paint application because of the water now since my brush has less and less water I'm much more in control you see how the pigment that makes this paint is distributed so I certainly now can even darken the tone of my of my paint see so certainly here and again um, if it, an accident will happen and you will cross the line no problem you can change everything here see so that is not a big deal but make sure that when you come to this ending here to the line that divides ground this part here from the sky you are quite precise okay so evenly don't make mushy lines we don't want any mushy lines here right so uneven very very even line it could be curly no problem archy whatever you want to call it but it has to be uh, it can be mushed okay or fuzzy or oh, fuzzy is the better word i like to use the word mushed like this okay so that will be our sky if you want that the sky will have some snowflakes or some stars that you can use some white paint and actually I will do it later on when this dry me the paint a little bit now from there on I want to go to the color of the ground and for that purpose I want to use first yellow color and I want to use yellow because I want to have a ground that will be covered with green color and when I want to have a green color, yellow allows me, like you see what is happening, I had the blue on my brush, and because I apply yellow now, um, I use yellow with unclean brush, my color turns into secondary color, which is green. So you see, those of you who never, never knew about it, now Eureka, we know that mixing yellow and blue, we get beautiful green. But since we want to be in charge how this green will look like and we for sure don't want to have a one kind of green so I rather suggest that first use yellow and then by using some green um, some green placed on it and some blue you will get different variation of the green now those of you who don't have watercolors at home um, make sure that you use again the same masking tape and then draw fill those those gaps of this, this uh, sections of the paper with either pastels you can use either oil pastels chalk pastels or uh, wax crayons or colored pencils so you have quite a range of art supplies art materials that you can use for this product so you see how nice this green starts looking it has the luminosity because the colors shine those colors shine and this is the greenish yellow yellow color uh, yellow greenish greenish yellow and green 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 okay I call it see variety and that's what the painting wants to have, especially when you have such a big section of the color uh, representing the ground here oh we did it or is it what is it here oh let me see i don't even know oh yeah this is the trunk this is hard to see sometimes <laughs> see even more even more for sure here i have to come a little with a little bit more paint and have lots of lots of fun you see that's very good now i need to decide if i want to apply some of my orange color here and I think I will especially when I have this bluish color there so you see what this orange will do it will create nice contrast with the blue at the same time will change my color then I can come with my green believe me or not now the green can come again just patchy 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 so you see more of the orangey yellowish color here and more of the greenish yellowish color on the bottom so this way we get quite a nice forest and remember we still didn't pick up the masking tape from our tree so I want to see what will happen notice when I put those patches I don't want to completely um, cover my yellow color uh, this is one thing here secondly I'm really moving my green right those patches not just one way of applying them not my brush dances I call it on the ground from there it's good and the last thing which I want to use purple 
you will say, Madam, okay, why do you want to use purple? Yes, I want to use purple because especially on the bottom here, will look beautiful. Okay, not too much again, just a little bit. So you see that the, what is happening, we have a transition from one, yellow is like a base, and then there's the transition of the colors from orangey to the green to the to purple. Lots of lots of different colors, and this will add the beauty to our painting. See, like this. Right, I think it's good. Now, the, st the next stage will be, we have to let it dry, and then when you come back, we will we will remove the masking tape and just put the last touches uh, on our trees oh okay guys those of you who now want to see what we can do with the sky well we can add some stars and i have my acrylic paint here of temper i don't remember which one i have here and with the pointed brush i can introduce some stars and I have the colors that I have here. Let me see, I just have to wash my brush. You can see that I have copper color, gold, I have silver. I don't know if they're still working because they could be dry, but I certainly will take white. And with the white, like you see, I can apply not too much um, water. I can't have too much water. You see, I make the stars of different scale, of different size. I don't want all of them look exactly the same way. I'll see if I have silver here. Oh, the silver, I don't know, I'm not so sure if my silver is working, but I know that, let's see, my gold, it's also dry. Let's see, oh, copper is working, perfect. Copper is working, copper will be a beautiful addition to this painting. Okay, see, a little bit, iridescent colors. So you can use white, and we certainly can add some of our copper here. I truly try to make sure that the coppery stars are not of the same scale. So you see, sometimes my brush <laughs> is pressed too much and then, whoop, you see, that's better here. This is bigger one, that's okay. Now, white. I want to go with some white stars. So I'm really very careful when I, when I touch the paper that those stars are not of the same scale. And then, if you want to, since we have this color here, I will introduce it a little bit into the ground to unify all my painting. Why not? I think it will give this nicer, nicer look. You don't need to do it, certainly not. There's not requirement. And I just, since I have this paint, I discovered and I have, have it already. This is a little bit too strong. See, so here. Then I will introduce it also onto the ground. See, and that will be okay. Wow, I like it, I like it, I like it. Even this brown here. Very good. So now we can remove the masking tape and see the trunks of our trees. So you see the first one is here. It's still not there because I have another piece of masking tape that has to be removed. Fantastic. Now, since I've used two pieces of masking tape over lapping each other so i have to first go for the remove the first piece of masking tape and then go for the second one not right away for all now when i look at those trunks guys they are white and since they are white, I think we have to embrace the color that we have there and add colors that will um, help us to see the trees as particular trees. And I think um, that white trunks are very common with, uh, with the birch trees. So the birch trees have those crazy lines coming on their bark. And I will do it by using, use those lines, by using simply brown or even a little bit of black, you see, and I will place them like this and then smoothing them just a little like this. They have those lines. I don't want to have too much paint. And you know what? I think black will look better and blue. Blue and black mixed together. So what I'm taking it here again, not this black, a little bit of blue, and I'm going for those lines. Like this and moving. Like this, moving. Like this, moving. Not even, you notice, I don't place the lines exactly in the same spots because then they will not look nice. Brown, it was a little bit too, Warm. And then with my finger, or maybe later on with the brush again, remove the parts. 
So again, you create the line, not this line, use the flat brush like I have it right now here and then move it. Just drop it a little bit on one side. Make sure that there's different intensity of the paint on your brush. So if necessary, go back and mix blue with black. If you don't have blue, just black will be okay. You see, this is too intense, but I'm not worried about that. I just move it, right? Even when I want to, like you see, I can make this tree trunk a little bit darker. Not very much, just a little bit, because I need the contrast, right? I'm going like this, see? And that will be good. Wow, that looks really, really good. Some more. Just clean up your brush on this paper. That will look good. You see, so I just darkened it on one side. I didn't go on this side here. I went on one side, just one side to make it darker, you see? So, and I didn't, I used only the paint that was left, like a stain on my brush. I didn't use very much water. Notice what it does. It causes the tree to get 3D. Again, blue and black. Right, and then I'm going to another tree and then I'm coming back to it. Again, one line, chuk, chuk. another line, chuk, chuk. another line here, another line here, another one here, another one there, and even you notice I'm now applying them in the same spots, right? Now we can come back here and make this side a little bit darker. Whoa, see? Whoa, ha, ha, that's a nice trunk. Now on the bottom, I have to make sure that really this tree is dark. Black, blue, and the same exercise. Notice here, this trunk is very important because it's the prominent one, it's the largest, the biggest. So again, notice here I started from here, here I'm starting from the other side and I'm moving that here. Tapping again and again. So I can see how nicely this looks like. You can also, and I show you here on this tree, you can start actually with application of the paint on one side, like I'm doing it here, and then you will come with crossed lines, right? With those um, horizontal lines that will cross our painting. I think I need a little bit of brown here too. So it has to, everything has to be done with nice balance. So you see, brown is necessary here too. So we have those blue blackish lines, but I think at certain point we also have to add a little bit of brown. Now, oh, oh, we did not remove one of them. Oh, look at this. We have another trunk. Good, I like it. We will have more fun. And now, the last thing that we want to do, guys, is to apply the shade on the side. So for the shade, remember, this one line here, it's okay, but then we have to still come with the lines that are going See again how vertical and horizontal and then you smudge it right now again tuck 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 you see and that changes the look so dramatically you see those trees have volume then so that means they look 3d okay one side is dark especially here on the bottom you for sure want to make the whole tree darker you see what is happening we give it the volume and that's so important. Remember, we are magicians as artists and we can create this amazing effect of, of something looking like, like a real object. And one of those tricks is by using the shadows and following with them in the proper places. You see here, we make the decision um, that we place the shadow on one side of the trunks of the trees and then we consistently follow it. When you would not do that, then the trees would really very, I call it suspicious, when one of them would have shadow on one side and the other one on the other one. No. The light, let's see, because it's a, you can say that's night time. Uh, during that time, even then, when you see, for example, the moon, the light of the moon will come from one direction, stuck with the sun. And you have to then decide, you see, which side, you see how good it looks? Well, look good. In some places, I can add even here on the side a little bit of brown. And now I'm improvising because I want to have those colors working well together for me. So you see, not everywhere you have to follow with one recipe. This is what makes the difference um, between uh, the good artist or very good artist and the excellent artist. When you are able 
to um, find those, those, to put those chairs on the top of the cake, I call it. So that means to introduce those lovely um, additional um, changes, right? Dep on the spot, but finding, okay, what will work the best for my painting, right? Like you see, this works so good. And you start adding those things and, and, and having fun. You can remember, painting is about having fun. When you don't have fun, it should not, that you should maybe not paint, okay? It has to, at the beginning is always difficult because you learn the tricks of the tray, but after that, like with the instrument, you persevere and then you have so much fun. And sure, you constantly learn, you constantly experiment, and yes, you get frustrated, but it's a different kind of frustration. It's the frustration, I call it artistic frustration. It's the creative frustration that you know that at the end, you will learn so much from it. And this fr frustration causes that that you are searching even more for finding the best solution to that what you are doing, what you are creating, right? It's constantly, you see, when, when you will always feel satisfied with that what you are doing and, and have a formula that you always follow, the same, the same, the same, that means that you cease to be an artist. At this point in your life, you became a craftsman. And it's nothing wrong with being a craftsman, but if you want to be an artist, you are always, always experimenting, right? Always pushing this one step that sometimes oh, causes disaster. Though from those disasters, from this collection of disasters, you became a stronger artist, believe me or not. So it's worth to do it. You see, I'm still pushing this contrast here on this tree because I think that would help it. You see, just a little bit more, just a little bit. It's just, just me now trying to, to find the best. And again, even when I would make at the end, not intend what I wanted to, and this tree will not look so good, I at least I succeeded in trying, see? And even when it will not be perfect, it doesn't matter at the end, because as an artist, I have to experiment. I have to find out for myself. You see, you see this blue, actually, it's a very good addition. Look at this. I really like what is happening here. I really, really do. So I will even try to apply it here. A little bit more, you see, adding it here. And just a little bit. But this a little bit makes a huge, huge difference. See? Just like this, just like this, just like this, and just like this. And I think, guys, we are, oh, well, why not? You see, when you are here, I just apply a little bit of the blue here on the bottom just next to the to the ends of the trunks, right? Why I'm doing it here? Because I want to change slightly the color to bring this cool color next to them. You see, not too much so in the back, but just make this difference, you see? And then I love it like this. Wow, I really like this painting. So I hope that you enjoyed working with me on it and now you are ready to create your own painting. So have lots of lots of fun and see you next time. Bye.